In this video, I'm going to show you how to make relatively complex tires like this in the easiest way possible. We do it by making a small section, so it's actually really adaptable and you can change the pattern of the grooves nice and easily, and it will update on the rest of the wheel. This is actually a segment from my hard surface modeling course where we make this car here, and it's got lots of hard surface modeling techniques so you can create any hard surface model you can think of. Links in the description. So let's start off by deleting the default cube, of course. Zoom in, Shift A to add mesh, and I'm going to start with a plane. I'll come around to the front here, go into edit mode with tab, and Control R to do a loop cut down the middle. Left click, then right click straight away. Left click applies it, right click cancels any movement. And let's go to face mode with three, and delete this face here. So delete, then faces. So now I can use a mirror modifier to edit just this side. So across to the modifiers down here, add modifier, then start typing in mirror. And you can see that face being copied to the other side along the x-axis. That's the x-axis here. And I'll turn clipping on so they stick together in the middle. Now what I want to do is start creating my tire pattern. I'm going to create a small section of the tire that I'll repeat over and over. I'll select all with A and scale in the Y and bring it into somewhere around here. It doesn't matter too much. This part you can adapt a lot and kind of make it your own tire pattern, but I'll do a really basic one just as an example. I'll scale it a little bit further in fact to there. Control R to do a loop cut and I'll have three loop cuts across here like so, and then one loop cut across here. And I'm going to make each of these kind of a extruded segment. So still in edge mode, I'll select all my edges and Control B to bevel. So I'm creating the kind of grooves as it were. So around about there should do. I'll press Control R so I can create one in the middle as well. And this one's going to be half the size of the middle one because it will be repeated the other side. And I'll create one on the very edge here as well. So something like this. Again, it doesn't have to be precise. I'll go to face mode and select all these faces here like so, just holding down shift and left clicking. And then I'll extrude them upwards in the Z axis. So just make sure they are going up in the Z axis by tapping Z. So we've got this kind of pattern here. I will actually need to extrude this edge out along here. So back to edge mode, select this edge, that's Alt left click and E to extrude in the Y and bring that out slightly. And just make sure it's roughly the same size. Probably need to go a little bit further, somewhere around there. You can be more precise with your tires. Again, this is just an example. Let's go to top view and do some slight adaptions. Alt Z to go to wireframe and select the middle here, G then Y to bring that down. And these ones here, G then Y and bring that down. So there's kind of a curve to it. I've noticed some tire patterns do that. So we've got our tire segment just here. If you like this content, then check out my Ultimate 3D Artist program. It's an eight week boot camp designed to help you grow as an artist and get you to the next level fast. It's got modules with assignments and you get direct feedback. Check out the link in the description for more information on that. It's on sale at the moment and the next program starts on September the 7th. So make sure you sign up before then so you don't miss out. I'll come out of X-Ray mode with Alt Z and what we want to do now is add an array modifier to create lots of them. So again, I can go across to my modifiers and start typing in array this time. And then array is under the generate menu. So I can array like this. Now it's going across the X axis. I'll just minimize the mirror. We don't need to see that anymore. You can see the counters too, and I can turn that up and you can see more being created just there. It's going along the X, which you can see here because the relative offset is set to one in the X. And one counts as the entire length of our object. And that's taking into account the mirror modifier. So it's the whole thing because the mirror modifier comes first, then this one afterwards. So I need to change this to zero. So all my arrays are on top of each other at the moment and in the Y I'll change it to one for now. Now the reason they aren't stuck together is because it's taking into account the whole length so you can see it's from this point to this point here. So we need to change the offset really slightly so I'll bring it down until they kind of stick together relatively close there. Six will be too much I would have thought. Yes. So it's going to be around 0.68 maybe. Oh that's pretty close. 0.685. This is the fun bit where you have to just adapt it slightly each time. So it looks like for me, it's going to be 0.686 by the looks of things, or maybe seven actually, oh dear. There we go. You might want to tick on the merge to make sure they actually do merge there. And there is actually some options there where you can increase the distance and so forth. But we seem to have got our arrays working and we can increase them just here with the count. So we need to add in our curve so it goes around a curve. But before we do that, I probably want to extend the end down, I think. So just go into edge mode, select the edge there, E to extrude in the Z, bring that down and E to extrude in the X. So we've got a tire and I'll do a couple of loop cuts there. G then X, move those out. And this edge across here, let's just slide that down a bit. So it looks a little bit more like a tire and this is gonna wrap around our curve. And again, this is just an example. You can make your tire segment 
far more complicated. So let's bring in our curve now. So I'll go to object mode. The important thing to understand here is that it's got to be right on top or in exactly the same place as this tire segment here. So the object origin is all important. I haven't moved the object origin, so it should be right in the center of our tire, and that's great. And if I press N on my keyboard, you can see I haven't even moved the location of it. So it's right in the center of the grid. I haven't rotated it and I haven't scaled it. So it's at zero, zero and one just there. That's good. So I'll press Shift A to add and add in a curve and a circle. I'll scale this up and rotate around the Y axis 90 degrees. So we've got this wheel that it's going to go around. And again, the object origin is right in the center. If for any reason they're not, you can select them both and Alt G will remove any movement. Obviously they're not moving because they're right in the center. The only thing is my curve, if I select that, you can see the scale is out and the rotation is out. It's really helpful to set these back to zero basically. So we can press Control A to apply the rotation and scale. And you can find that under the object menu there, apply. And notice when I did that, it's all set to zero here and one on the scale. So that's good. They've both got zeros and one on the scale. So we're ready to match our tire to this curve. Now with my plane selected, I'm going to change the name of it to tire. So it's nice and clear. And with the array modifier, let's change it from fit type from fix count to fit curve. Now it goes back to zero because we haven't selected a curve. So I need to get the picker and select this curve object. And you can see now this length is actually the same length as our curve there. Now all we need to do is make it go around the curve. So I'll minimize this array modifier, add modifier. And this time I'll type in curve because it's a curve deform. So I'll select that and curve object. I want to choose this curve object just here. It's almost there, but it's going the wrong direction. That's because the deform axis needs to match our array length along here which is the Y. So getting closer but there's still a few issues. The first one is that it seems to be kind of the wrong way round for some reason. If I select my curve which is in the middle here and go into edit mode you can see with my points selected I've got a mean tilt option and if I tilt that minus 90 degrees you can see that's in the right place now but for some reason it's really big. I don't know quite why it has scaled it up but it has. We can change that by pressing Alt S and that will scale our points down until we're happy with the size. Probably somewhere around here, maybe there, for example. And that's not looking too bad. Looks like we've got a little bit of overlap there. Again, that's something that shouldn't really happen. So the way to get around this, and it shouldn't really be like this, unfortunately, but this is the only way I've figured out how to do it, is I'm going to select these both and create a link duplicate. So Alt D and bring that across in the X. The reason I need to do that is if I want to edit the shape, it's much easier to edit the shape when it's in edit mode like this. However, we can't see the results. So if I undo that, so if I go back to object mode, select this one here and turn on the display modifier in edit mode here for this one. When I select this one, go into edit mode and start changing the shape, we should be able to see the results here. So if I select all and scale in the Y, so just scale in the Y slightly, I can modify it so it stops overlapping, but you have to be really careful and get it really precise. It is a very frustrating thing that it doesn't actually work straight off the bat really and is overlapping, but it's actually helpful to modify the shape. Then you get the exact length of the grooves that you want. And I think I'm probably there now. And obviously I can come out of edit mode and delete this one. And that is how we create these complex tires like this with their grooves using both the array modifier, fitting it to the curve and the curve to form modifier. So hopefully now you know how to create tires. So if you like this sort of content, do make sure you check out the hard surface modeling course where we create this fun car. And there's lots of useful tips and tricks like this for hard surface modeling. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.